someone get me a cry closet because I am triggered. <laughs> I mean, duh. This is my natural state. I'm Bridget Fettesy, and this is your dumpster fire for the weeks of December 1st to December 14th. And the unicorns dance while the world burns, world burns, world burns. The unicorns dance while the world burns. Starting it off. Troll in exile. Trump is back with more trading cards. The mugshot edition. Hi, everyone. This is your favorite president, Donald J. Trump. Now I'm back with my latest series called the Mugshot Edition. I wonder where that came from. We're creating a real physical Trump card. Purchase 47 digital cards and we'll mail you a beautiful trading card. It is an authentic piece of the suit I wore when I took that now famous mugshot. And it was a great suit. Believe me, a really good suit. It's all cut up and you're going to get a piece of it. And everyone gets a piece. <laughs> Every time I see this stuff, I realize that we have moved so far beyond any kind of idiocracy. We are fully living in the world of beyond parody, where parody is reality. It's all just a satire now. It's huh. hard to take any of it seriously. And weirdly, whenever I see these things, I find myself going like, I miss the little guy. <laughs> Some people call these cards pop art or modern art. I wish I looked as good as I do on those cards. That I can tell you. They give me muscles where, believe me, I don't have them. These trading cards are just proof that politics has become team sports fully. They literally have trading cards now, the politicians. At least it's entertaining. If we're going to live in a time when gas prices are increasing and groceries cost a million dollars. I might as well have a president that's entertaining and not a senile one who tries to put out weird holiday videos. In the White House that creep <laughs> me out. I love that he has the pieces of his suit sewn into these cards. Uh -huh. Somebody on his team is a baseball card collector. They know what they're doing. We need the Biden baseball card set with just shreds of his depends. <laughs> shreds of his dignity. <laughs> depends. All the political nerds can get together and play MAGA the Gathering. <laughs> If you have MAGA parents and grandparents, your only inheritance is going to be one of these Trump <laughs> trading cards and some random NFTs that there's no way you have the code to access these. They're somewhere that you'll never find and your, your, your boomer parents or grandparents forgot to write it down. A true collector's item. This is something to give to your family, to your kids and grandchildren. I mean, it's a brilliant strategy you there you have to buy 47 of these virtual cards at 99 bucks a pop in order to get the like real one with the suit piece your only inheritance because trump is going to bankrupt your entire family is going to be these random nfts and maybe one of the collectible actual real life baseball cards which by the way i want if somebody wants to buy the dumpster fire crew maga trading card the actual one. I will frame it and put it on the set. <laughs> Here is our mailing address. You can send it there. <laughs> I wonder which lawsuit this, these cards are going to pay for. It's like he was just kind of winging it at the end and they're like, okay, wrap it up. And he's like, have a nice life. <laughs> have a good life. <laughs> That's like something you say before you kill yourself. <laughs> I hope you have a nice life. Is that what he said? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. It's also something you say when you're breaking up with someone. Are you breaking up with America, Don? I hope you have a nice life. You can't leave us, Donnie. They're not going to take you from us. They might. I do miss the little guy. He talked every day when he was president. Uh, <laughs> it was just endless churn cycle. It was fuel for the dumpster, uh, that's for sure. Join us at Fetacy.com for the unedited version of Dumpster Fire. You get behind-the-scenes content like me mocking myself about my outfit and being a floozy. It launches on Fridays, so you get it a few days before the edited version comes out for free. 
And you also get access to our amazing community where we do workouts and we have a book club. We're reading Brave New World for January's book club. That book is freaking weird, by the way. (laughs) I don't remember it being as weird as it is. You also get access to my podcast with my husband, which is exclusive for supporters any only. We're always adding things like we have a fantasy Christmas party that if you are seeing this, you already missed it. But every year we do one and we do live streams just for supporters. So join us. It's the best way to support this show. I'm also probably raising rates in the new year. So if you are kind of on the fence and like, oh, I want to support these this sad old lady on YouTube, do it now. And get grandfathered in at these rates. All right. All right. But if you can't, I understand. And please just tell your friends about us. And also, like, subscribe, and comment. Touch my jingle bells and my buttons. And tell your favorite suburban mom about us. Make Orwell fiction again. Jeremy Godfrey is now head of monitoring and censoring social media in the Republic of Ireland. All I can say is I can see why this guy would want to censor mean comments on the Internet. (laughs) (laughs) This is like his whole life's work. (laughs) He's been waiting for this moment. This is literal revenge of the nerds. He's been striving for this kind of power since the minute that he was able to understand that people were making fun of him. (laughs) This guy looks like a sentient wedgie. He looks like the kind of guy who makes sure you don't come back for seconds at the Costco sample line. (laughs) This looks like the kind of guy who pronounces basil as basil. (laughs) He looks like Professor Frank from The Simpsons. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I mean, it's proof that nerds have had it too good for too long. I thought it was fake. Literally 90% of the stories this week, I had to be be like, is this real or am I being trolled? Mm -hmm. Because it's, I can't, it's impossible for me to even determine the difference anymore. Because we live in the beyond parody times, the time of fetacy. Hypocrisy on fire. Presidents of Harvard, MIT, and UPenn refused to say that calling for the genocide of Jews broke their university's code of conduct. This was bananas. At MIT, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate MIT's code of conduct or rules regarding bullying and harassment? Yes or no? I have not heard calling for the genocide for Jews on our campus. But you've heard chants for intifada. I've heard chants, which can be anti-Semitic depending on the context when calling for the elimination of the Jewish people. At Penn, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Penn's rules or code of conduct? Yes or no? If the speech turns into conduct, it can be harassment, yes. I I am asking specifically calling for the genocide of Jews, does that constitute bullying or harassment? If it is directed and severe or pervasive, it is harassment. So the answer is yes. It is a context-dependent decision. And Dr. Gay, at Harvard, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Harvard's rules of bullying and harassment, yes or no? It can be, depending on the context. What's the context? Targeted at at an individual. It's targeted at Jewish students, Jewish individuals. These are unacceptable answers across the board. Someone get me a cry closet because I am triggered! (laughs) After years of these people saying every little freaking thing is a microaggression, you can't ask where anyone's from, you can't learn math, being on time is racist. We've been covering how everything is racist and genocide for five years almost. And then suddenly they get in front of like a panel of people and cannot say that calling for the genocide of Jews is hateful speech. Uh, It's unbelievable. You can't condemn it. I'm sorry, what? And then they fired the white lady because she could go. (laughs) Um, We knew that was happening. We also knew that Professor Gay, what was her name? 
gay. <laughs> yeah, that's gay. <laughs> We're gay. Claudine Gay, who is the head of Harvard, the board came out and defended her, even in light of the fact that she has come out as a plagiarist. I couldn't think of any jokes for this, so maybe I'll just steal some other people's. I mean, send your kids to trade school. <laughs> This is just proof. We need more electricians and less politicians. Somehow everything is calling for genocide except actually calling for genocide. This is the beyond parody times. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how they get away with the slippery shit. They have cry closets. They gave people time off from school when they freaking Trump was elected. These are the most fragile, sensitive students ever to exist in the history of humanity. And yet, if you call for the genocide of Jews, that somehow gets a weird pass and needs context. We need context. What do you mean we need context? I generally would think there's not much context that I need if someone is saying, let's genocide an entire population of people. <laughs> You're basically saying it's okay in any context. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree with Thomas Sowell. Famous Thomas Sowell quote, the principal benefit of a Harvard degree is never again having to be impressed by anyone with a Harvard degree. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by sheathunderwear.com. I love this sponsor. Their patented dual pouch system is truly revolutionary. It is the only underwear my husband wears at all anymore. He wants nothing to do with anything else. It cradles your family jewels lovingly. There's a separate compartment for the genitalia to come through. Everything gets its own room. It's spacious. You don't have to worry about readjusting. It's moisture wicking. There's all kinds of benefits to the sheath underwear line for men as well as women. It's pretty much all I wear during the day. They have nice sports bras and underwear that are pH balanced and the, the fabric is fantastic. They're always releasing new products. Please support the companies that support us. This is a small business we really love and I, a product I can get behind. Go to sheathunderwear.com, use the code dumpster to get 20% off your entire order. That's sheathunderwear.com, use the code dumpster and get 20% off your entire order. And the link is in the description below. All right, capitalism always wins. Krispy Kreme opens in France. Ha, we're coming for you, friends. <laughs> we're gonna fatten you up yet. You know what? I'm tired of all the French. America's like, we're going to get you. We're going to get you. All the French, and they're like, I smoke a pack of cigarettes a day, and I eat my bread and cheese and all these American fatties. We are not fat here in France, and we eat whatever we want. Ha! We'll show you, France. <laughs> People of France, a good-looking, depressed guy smoking a cigarette is not a movie. We will conquer Europe without firing a single bullet or raising a single sword. Don't you know that obesity is America's number one export other than BLM? That's our second biggest export. <laughs> we just got tired of you guys bragging about how skinny you are with your cheese and your pastries and your your bread all the time. Oh, look at the, the bad state of food in America, these fatties. And your, your sirens, sirens sound, sound like, like gay, gay guys, guys having, having a threesome. A threesome. Oh, 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 oh. These fast food companies have saturated the market in America and Americans. And now they're coming for you, France. <laughs> yeah, this is part of a whole string of chains that are doing well in France. They're doing great. And Fran I learned from this article that France is the number two market for McDonald's, I think. Yeah. They're the second most profitable country for McDonald's ah! after the U.S. <laughs> I'll show you, France. We're going to fatten you up. And you don't want to have to hear bragging about, oh, yeah, so why are you so fat? What is in your food? We do not make sizes for you fat Americans with our French couture. Ah! Stop! I could have dropped my croissant. No, they don't. But they will. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to fatten you up. Kid Rock is back on board the Bud Light train. He never left. Kid Rock never left the Bud Light train. He was just in the closet about it. <laughs> Kid Rock has gone broke back mountain on Bud Light. I wish I knew how to quit you. I wish I knew how to quit you. He was shooting cans of this. <laughs> 
I mean, nothing proves more that capitalism always wins than this hillbilly 9-11 truther. <laughs> I don't know if he is a 9-11 truther, but I feel like Kid Rock probably is a 9-11 truther. This guy was shooting cans out of disgust. We covered it because yeah. it was so ridiculous. And I believe we were like, he'll be back. I mean, Kid Rock is our generation's Ted Nugent. <laughs> I, I mean, duh. This is the best the conservatives can do, by the way. Maybe you need some of your leaders and pundits to be more effective than like, oh, we be- we're talking about how we boycotted a beer. Yeah, somebody make some motherfucking noise in here. The conservatives wonder why the institutions have been captured up and down by the left. They are playing chess while you guys are playing checkers. They're like, we're going to boycott a beer. We'll show them. And it did, kind of, only it just forced Bud Light to, like, offer a lot more money to guys like Kid Rock and the UFC. So much money that they couldn't say no to it. And now you all look like idiots because people don't care. It's a freaking beer. This is your big, this is your hill you're going to die on. Find another hill. Now let's check the weather with Diana Alvarado. Y demuestro que un... Frente frío continúa avanzando hacia nuestro territorio. Esto vendrá hacia el día viernes. Por lo pronto, el sistema de alta presión mantiene tiempo seco. Doesn't she look like a present you want to unwrap? Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, touch my bells and buttons, tell your friends, and pass us around like Denise at the Christmas party. <laughs> if you didn't get that joke, you're going to have to subscribe to see the unedited version because we did all, I went on a whole tangent about what this looks like. Karen is modeling last year's Dumpster Fire limited edition Christmas merch. If you want to get this year's limited edition Christmas merch, I can't guarantee it'll be there by Christmas, but I can guarantee you'll get it. And I suggest you do go to BridgetFetacy.com for all of your merch needs. Get your aunt Karen or your uncle Billy that defund the IRS merch. They will get compliments on it wherever they go. It is the best present. We'd like to thank our sponsor, CrowdHealth. Stop sending money to big insurance companies that profit off not paying your bills. Did you know that 48 million claims on Obamacare last year were denied? That's one in five claims. Do you want to take that chance? I don't think so. Health insurance sucks. It's confusing, expensive, and frustrating. There is a better way. Welcome to the alternative. CrowdHealth was created to get rid of the headaches of health insurance. For $175 for an individual or $575 for a family of four or more, you'll get access to a community of people who are willing to help out in the event of an emergency. You'll also get telemedicine visits, discounted prescriptions, and more. Let CrowdHealth help you with your healthcare needs. You can get started today for just $99 per month for the first three months if you use the code BRIDGET to get the healthcare you deserve. CrowdHealth is not insurance. Learn more at joincrowdhealth.com. That's joincrowdhealth.com. Use the code Bridget. Link in the description below. Our next sponsor is the Night Rico Saved Santa, a loving Christmas story. Have you ever wondered why we give fruitcake for Christmas? Does anyone ever actually eat it? And if so, why? It's fruitcake. This story explores the fake origins of this tradition. One of Alex's favorite Christmas traditions is reading the night Rico saved Santa to his daughters. Alex is the author of this book. They've been reading this story for years since the youngest was a baby. You need to understand that this is one story told twice. The first version is safe for all ages. The second version is a little bit spicier with more color commentary. This is such a cute book and it's a local artist and it's a very Texas story. There's a lot of inside Texas jokes, but it's not just for Texans. And I want to support artists who are creating their own stuff and putting it out there. And if you want to support somebody who supports this show, head over to Amazon and pick up a copy of The Night Rico Saved Santa. There's no end in pandemic. People who followed COVID guidelines are more likely to have mental health issues now. Yeah, I mean, 
Yeah. I think they started that way, and that's why they were more likely to follow COVID guidelines, and then their mental health issues were exacerbated. I think that's what actually happened. I believe these people were already mentally ill, (laughs) and then they only got worse. (laughs) These are all the same people who have long COVID. You're telling me that the people who wore full bubbles to touch Mima and say goodbye and like there you guys we have memory hold the weird stuff that went on with the mentally ill crazy people during COVID even after we figured out that it was like pretty much just killing old people fat people and people with you know, underlying health, pre-existing conditions. Well, and also just, you know, like how it's not going to live on your groceries or whatever. You That's know. what I mean. The, you're, you mean to tell me the people who are spraying down their groceries with Clorox bleach are mentally ill? You mean to tell me the people who enforce this are mentally? Well, no, they're just power hungry psychopaths. You are violating a mandated safer inside order. Put down the snowball and get back to quarantine. We've got a runner. They filled in the skate park at the freaking beach. They chased after a runner who was alone on the beach. They took down the basketball hoops so you couldn't go play basketball and put padlocks on playgrounds. They made children who were barely affected by this sit in little creepy quarantine corners and masks out on the playground for years Uh, they arrested surfers on the beach oh it was i mean there was a guy dressed like a grim reaper in florida telling everyone they were gonna die (laughs) you mean to tell me these people are mentally ill i can't believe it of course they're mentally ill (laughs) (laughs) now they're only worse Uh uh-huh people's brains fully broke and then they were locked up Yeah. And they went crazy and they read books while they were in quarantine and became poly anarchists. (laughs) Then we have Yay So Cray Yay. Kanye West wears a black KKK outfit at the Vultures (laughs) album party. Yay is the black mage in MAGA The Gathering. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. Again, in the Beyond Parody Times, as we've mentioned quite a few times in this edition of Dumpster Fire... Every single satire becomes real. And this is the black white supremacist sketch that Chappelle did for his first sketch of the Chappelle show. Black power! It's just come to life now. I see good things about Hitler also. Oh, Kanye. I miss blowjob Kanye. He always looks like an executioner, too. He has like a... That's not a KKK mask. That's an executioner mask. Maybe now that he's poor, he's all about eating the rich. (laughs) Gen Z discovers. Gen Z is turning to radical rest, delusional thinking, and self-indulgence to cope with late-stage capitalism. (sighs) Gen Z discovers failing to launch. This is nothing new. (laughs) Now there's just a whole generation of you. These kids had two years off, and a lot of them don't want to go back to having to do anything. They literally didn't have, especially like the weird, if you were kind of that college age and you were in your 20s and you basically got to like sit in your cute jammies on the couch all day and gain like 40 pounds and consume media and go crazy, you probably don't want to go back to actually having to work or do anything. Mm -hmm. I get it. I get it. It's not about late stage capitalism. You're just lazy. (laughs) Get out there and do something, guys. The world does not owe you shit. I love how they're like, we're just we're just reacting to late stage capitalism by doing nothing, man. Like, no, you're not fooling anyone. Okay, we know you're just don't want to do anything. My generation of Gen X lazy people were just honest about being lazy slackers. Like, I, we invented slackerism. That is my generation, Gen X. Looks like you've been missing a lot of work lately. I wouldn't say I've been missing it, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> 
We were open about being slackers and we were proud of it. You guys couch it in all this political nonsense as a form of resistance and try and pretend that you're 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 slacktivists. You're basically on the couch being like, please, you know, free Palestine or whatever. And you're just fucking lazy. <laughs> Just admit it. Just own it. Own that you don't want to do anything and you want to live off your your poor Gen X parents who are taking care of their boomer parents and now you. Own that you don't want to have a house or kids because that is a lot of work and responsibility and you came of age during the cry closet era. (laughs) It's not your fault, really. Yeah. The practice of doing nothing as resistance. Examples of this radical ideology include not getting married, not having children, not buying a house or a car, and refusing to work extra hours or to hold a job at all. (sighs) Wow. Gen Z discovers being a loser. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. I mean, we created this monster. It was the Gen X generation that raised all these, like, bubble children. Yeah. Yeah. You take drugs, Danny? Every day. Good. So what's the problem? I don't know. I'm here for you. I'm only giving you shit to toughen you up because, my God, dumpster diving. Speaking of mentally ill online. <laughs> what's next? What's next in the dumpster? <laughs> I love that I make fun of mental illness all the time on here, and I'm like, I'm not crazy. <laughs> Hunter Biden was indicted on nine new tax charges and it's been revealed he spent over $870,000 on prostitutes, porn and sex club memberships. Hunter Biden is being indicted for being the coolest man in America. (laughs) Can you imagine if this was Donald Trump Jr.? I understand why conservatives become gun hoarding, paranoid, lunatics screaming online Because the standards are so unevenly applied, it is blatantly unfair. I I get it. If I wasn't from Gen X, I would probably go crazy. Because Gen X has the ability to hold two thoughts in their brain at one time and laugh at the world while it burns. But I do understand how you could just be like, meh, meh, meh. If this was Donald Trump Jr., it would be wall-to-wall coverage. It's all we would ever hear about. He skipped a deposition. I didn't know you could just do that. It makes me crazy, and I hate that I have to even defend people like Donald Trump Jr., but what? not that I'm defending him. I just hate that I even have to be put in a position where you're like, can you imagine if this was Donald Trump Jr., who spent close to a million dollars on hookers and there were videos of him smoking crack and like every week we got a new new freaking hunter biden video and then he just skips the deposition that I, apparently you can just those things are just optional he's the left-wing andrew tate the matrix, matrix has attacked me and you hear crickets from the left because Hunter Biden is keeping the sex work industry like single-handedly. And a lot of OnlyFans moms are going to be able to get their kids Christmas presents this year because of good old Hunty. And then we have a pastor turns to OnlyFans and says she feels closer to God than ever. God, he knows what turns you on. What was the name of the city that she was from? Oh, no, it was... Um, Mexico? It was the... <laughs> <laughs> it was the uh, the like church that the I can't Fuxico believe Gospel it. Church. The it's church. not I'm how sure you it's pronounce like it. Fuxico or whatever. Right. It's F U X I C O. I'm I, I was reading the story and it's like oh this <laughs> pastor who's from the Fuxico Gospel Church. That's how it looks. <laughs> I'm sure it's like Fuxico or something <laughs> sexy because it's Portuguese. You you aren't fooling anyone with this move, lady. We've all done this before. We've uh, all of the exhibitionists, yours truly, have gotten naked and been like, I feel closer to God. (laughs) This is my natural state. I love that pivot, though. Yeah. That is one hell of a pivot. Yeah. 
Why did she become a pastor? Is this was she like a real pastor, or is this like you take a class online so you can marry your friends in Ojai? There's <laughs> no, there's pictures of her like at the church, you know, being it seems like a pastor. She was a model, then she became a pastor. She's also like an airline attendant or whatever they're called, flight she was attendant. She's a model, and then she she became a pastor at Foxico Gospel Church. <laughs> Now she's turned to OnlyFans. Maybe if there were more hot pastors like her, there wouldn't be such a problem with child molestation in the church. <laughs> Maybe she's the solution God wanted us to have. Nice. So she's looking for a job at <laughs> as a weather woman. <laughs> We've got another pivot for you. We are going to blow the show up just so we can hire a Fuxico Gospel Church lady to come be our <laughs> weather woman. Breaking Bridget. <laughs> a 50-year-old transgender swimmer used the changing room with young girls at a swimming event in Canada. This is an older story, but it's making the rounds in the news cycle because people are paying attention to it. And I didn't think this story was real. I'm like, this can't be real again. How I'm being trolled. I'm still, even though I've talked to people in Canada and people I trust in journalism who have absolutely confirmed that this is a real thing, I still don't believe it's real. I still, it seems like a 4chan troll designed to get people like me who make fun of everything to make fun of this so they can be like, gotcha, we tricked you by getting that man into the locker room with all those kids. But I think it's real. This is a 50-year-old trans-identified male in the locker room with... A bunch of young teenage, not even teenage, like, yeah, the swimming event is for th ages 13 and up. And typically it's from ages 13 to 17, but there's no cap on the age limit. So this 50 year old person decides, dude. yeah, dude decides to show up and get changed with the, the little girls and swim and compete against them. You have a 50 year old man in the changing room with little girls and the parent. Where are the fucking parents? This is what I want to know. You have one job as parents. One, protect your kids. That's your that is your primary job. Everything else after that is is doesn't matter. This just shows me how desperate people are and scared of the lack of courage is astonishing to me. I would it makes me murderous even reading this. I would be apoplectic if there was a male anywhere near my ch young daughter changing or watching her change this is basic basic keeping your children safe from a predator and now people are so worried about being called a bigot or being called a name or being seen as not progressive they're letting a dude change with their kids are you out of your minds well apparently parents put up a makeshift towel tenting apparatus Get so no one could see their daughters but i'm like yeah like why if if parents are doing that why aren't they just like no get out why, you shouldn't be putting up some makeshift tenting apparatus to protect your children. You should be making a huge stink and saying, get not letting any of your children compete. I would pull my kid out of there in two seconds and I would be all over the place being like, get this dude out of the freaking locker room. Are you kidding me? This and people say, oh, this isn't really like this isn't a, this is just a, this is not a one off. Of course, this is the ideology of allowing this weird self IDing phenomenon to run rampant in our society is that it's going to be exploited by people. And this is the extreme direction that it's headed in. And you have people just this week who have signed on and said that they'll take a D1 scholarship from uh, one of 12 women who could get a scholarship for volleyball at the University of Washington as a trans-identified male. This stuff makes me nuts. It makes me see red. Even if it's like one isolated incident in Canada, what? 
How many people had to just turn the other cheek and allow that to happen before this was... What? Why are you, speaking of mentally ill, imagine being in the mind of the person who is identifying as a woman and then decides, you know what? I'm going to go swim against little girls. And everyone's like, she's so brave. She's so brave. No, this is not bravery. This is insanity. Call it out. Stop being cowards. Call this sh- out. You think it's going to go away. It's not going to go away unless you start calling it out. And don't be afraid of being called a bigot. Oh, my God. And like all the parents are afraid and all the kids, you know, everyone's afraid. And uh, but Stop speaking in hushed tones amongst each other about this sh- and call it out. Right. Because somehow this person, this like grown man's. Most people think this is insane. This, somehow this grown man's feelings are more important than your young daughters. Yeah. And how weird would that be? I would be. Ugh, this generation growing up has a right to be furious at all of us, all the detransitioners, all the kids who are getting put on hormone blockers. When you come for us in the future, you will have every right to have come for us because nobody protected you. Nobody protected you from all of this insanity. It was a bunch of grownups who are such cowards and so afraid of being called a bigot that they just allowed crazy people to take over all the institutions and and do whatever they wanted to the kids. Like, no, this is nuts. Get it together, guys. Get it together. There's going to be like a bunch of kids with Kill Bill lists. <laughs> Fantasy news. Fantasy news. All right. Well, guys, it's been a year. <laughs> <laughs> it has been a year. We've made a lot of changes. We have a lot coming. We love you. We thank you for everything. Join us at Fetacy.com. Come see us in the community. I love interacting with all of you and getting to know you. Some of you have become my dear friends. I really appreciate all of your comments, spreading the love. Join us at Fetacy.com for the unedited version of Dumpster Fire. It goes up on Fridays. We have so much coming in the new year, and we're just so excited to be hopefully doing more of this. You subscribing to Fetacy.com enables us to Make that happen. We also now have a founding member level for people who want to see me. I started doing comedy again, and it is a shit show, as you can imagine, and humiliating and a learning curve and super fun, and I love it. And we're posting all of the sets while I, I mean, I'm building from scratch. And so we're posting that behind the paywall for founding members, as well as some of my memory hold content that has been disappeared off the internet, my vintage writing. If you can't do any of that, we're just grateful to have you sign up for free for our free newsletter and all the free content you get at fetacy.com, which is quite a lot of it. So just happy to have you in any capacity, even if it's all you can do is comment and subscribe, like, subscribe, comment, touch our bells and buttons, tell your friends about us, buy some merch from bridgetfetacy.com, If you are a member of our community, one of the benefits is you get 20% off all the merch all the time. Thank you to Dave Yates, Better Fetacy, Ben Howe, Sammy Flaps and Folds for editing, writing, and research. We cannot do this without them. Please go follow them on their social medias. Also, please buy some Ha Ha Hot Sauce to support our comedian writer, Dave Yates, at hahahotsauce.com. It goes a long way in helping him be able to continue grinding as a comedian and writing for us. It's truly the best hot sauce, no joke. I need some more myself. Thank you to our sponsors, Sheath Underwear, Crowd Health, and The Night Rico Saved Santa. Thank you, Cousin Maggie. Thank you, Bridget. Happy holidays to everyone. Thank you. We are off for the holidays and New Year. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. We are going to be surviving together in 2024. We want to make you laugh at the absurdity of it all. We want to laugh with you. And hopefully we will do our best to stay sane and strong in 2024. We are going to need it. Now to cleanse your palate. The internet is glorious. (laughs) 
your hat. Is this your secret to staying warm? No. No, it isn't. I have no secrets. <laughs> I'm mad. I have to go to work. I have to earn a living. I'd rather have a private income and get laid well and often. <laughs> That's it, folks. Thank you, 2023. Thank you to all of you. This has been your dumpster fire for the weeks of December 1st to December 14th. I'm Bridget Fettersy. Now make me rich. <laughs> 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 <laughs>